Howdy folks, long time no see. This is Retsu Talk episode 70. Admit we lingered on 69, as many people do, longer than we meant. Thought we would cancel the show. 69 seemed like a good run. I was pleased with it personally, but... Well, the old ball and chain here was like we need to do some more of these. So here we are. I don't know if you know, but in Poland, 73 is the sex number. So we have to at least... Poland? Poland. Yeah, did you know that? It's called a 73. How does that... So one person leans back really far and then the other person... No, no. No, 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 no. It, it's it's not like a different position. It's the same as the 69. And it's not a Polish joke either. It's just sort of a convention thing. It's like the so metric system. In Polish, 73 looks like the English 69. You know, if you want to make a big joke out of I'm it... I'm talking about appearances here. Yeah, uh, yeah, sure. If, if that's what you'd like. But the point is, yep. you know, we're an international podcast and we do have to uh, make it go up to 73. Just for the Polish people? Just for the Poles. They're called Poles. Pole dancing. Hey. Hey. 73. They call that a 75. Oh. Okay, All right. so we have to do five more of these, or six more. <laughs> Counting this Whatever. One. Right, yeah. Fine. What's new with you? How are things? Things are, are very, very tiring. Um, yeah, let me walk through the listener at home your life in a nutshell with some single words here wife marriage yes baby yes streaming yes let's playing mm. shmupping yes retsu praying yes convention going yes how are you still standing uh, also, I had a midterm last night. It was an online exam. Oh, yeah. School. Mm-hmm. It, it opened. It was available from midnight yesterday, or I guess technically midnight today, rather, you know, uh, up through Sunday. And I'm like, I am not going to have time ever again. So let's just take this right now as soon as it opens. So the professor probably thinks I cheated. Um, and I have a final on Tuesday in another class. So, yeah. Um... My uh, kid is teething a little early, which uh, I don't know what you know about babies, but means a lot of screaming. Lots of pain. You know, got work stuff. uh... Job. Yeah, job. Not just job, career. You have ambitions. And I'm going to PAX, baby! And, you know, there's that. You're just going to PAX so you can sleep. Isn't isn't that right? I'm actually kind of looking forward to, like, the whole get away from responsibility for like three days kind of thing now you're not staying alone though correct you're gonna have a couple of babies to look <laughs> couple... after anyway ironic no i have a couple of roommates yeah yeah what if they snore i uh hope they don't mm. and uh you'll be hearing the uh podcast with a couple of them at pax what if when they snore they sound exactly like a screaming child honestly i'm probably gonna be the one snoring and i'm i sleep through anything so fuck them they're screwed. I didn't tell them that part. So this will be the first PAX where the gang is getting separated. Yeah, I uh, was really hoping you'd kind of um, grow a pair and come out <laughs> the Look, final hurrah there. But you've been to one not. PAX. You've been to them now all. I know, PAX now I South cause... was here in Texas in January. It was sunny. It was 70 degrees. You're going in Boston the first quarter of the year. It's going to be below freezing the sh- city's a pile of snowy shit right now, still. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it is. And it's going to snow more. You uh, might the day not of. even get there because of weather. Oh, God, don't don't even joke about it. <laughs> I'm so looking forward to it. You might get Proton John'd, son, <laughs> on your travels. This is like the the married man's, like married dad's version of like the ba- like a bachelor party kind of thing, where it's <laughs> like, I mean, you know... <laughs> when I think PAX, I think of reckless abandon. All morals well, go out the window. That's the, this party is like my, city. Right. I'm just, I mean, you know, it's like, this is the closest to Vegas I'm going to get in the next, like, three years. So let's just, let's just fucking play a video game and sleep. That's all I fucking want to do. <laughs> um, no, it's, it's really, though, like, I know we've talked about me being busy before, but this has been, like, really, really, really 
um, crazy lately. Uh, and like we've had uh, less content. We've sort of dropped to a Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule because, um, you know, I feel like I guess we, we couldn't really like keep it going, you know, through because it wasn't just me either having the baby, but you also – you know, changed jobs recently. We both went through a sudden life transition. Yeah, yeah. Yours was really, like, abrupt. And it was just weird to have the timing worked out because it was, like, it really was, like, we both had that at exactly mm-hmm. the same time. Yeah. Which, you know, thank God for Turbo C, who's, like, doing editing and stuff for us, you know. Yeah, I think we like, thanked um, him. Maybe this is the third podcast in a row. But can't say it enough. Bro, you're a hero. Absolutely, yeah. And sadly, he will not be going to PAX. No, he got, yeah. Because he's got to do work for us. <laughs> I get to have fun. No, no, his uh, yeah, his job kind of pulled a, hey, we can't do it in yeah, the schedule kind of thing. That'll happen. What a what a jerk job. Oh, boy. Mine, I've been, like, telling them every day at, like, our daily. So, like, by the way, I'm out Thursday, Friday. They're like, we know, Mike. And I'm like, I don't care. You're going to hear you? it again. <laughs> And they're like, where are you going? Like, nowhere. <laughs> Do you play video games? Not real. I never heard of them video game. No. Um, well, you know what? House of Cards Season 3 is legitimizing. The President of the United States talks video games in it. I'll, well, I guess I don't have to see Season 2 now. Let me tell you about Monument Valley. Have you played Monument Valley? I haven't. I have. But Frank Underwood makes me want to. I'm going to tell you the the good and the bad. It's very cool. It's very like a unique art style kind of thing. It's a little easy. It's a little short. It's 4.99. Um which like you get 10 levels, which and if I were to run for elected office, would this help my strategy? Well, yeah, I guess. Okay. Maybe if you get the 199 DLC, which is another <laughs> thing. All right. No, I mean, it's one of those really tricky things about mobile games where, like, five bucks is, like, considered top tier in terms of expensiveness, you know? Uh, but it's it's a pretty short game for the money. Uh, but that said, like, it's one of those things where if you got a five five dollar game on Steam, like, if it was a Steam sale and it's like, it was a little short, but hey, it was five bucks and it looked really cool. Hmm. You know what I mean? You know, g- game, game length, it's becoming a pretty popular topic nowadays. Is it, though? Yeah, with the order, 1886, uh, 1886 seconds long. <laughs> I came up with that. No, you know, it's good. That was me. Someone probably beat me to I it. Just, I feel like, though, conversely, conversely, you have a problem where dev- like devs kind of feel like they have to pack in content to say they've packed in content. Where- Multiplayer's mandatory. Yeah, like, even when that's not appropriate, or just, like, let's just throw a bunch of, like, um, dressed-up side quests in here, or, like, okay, here's a fetch quest objective, but I'm saying it's something different, you know? Yeah. Like, I'll I'll add an hour to my game by making you collect three hidden things as opposed to one. So, like, I don't really mind, like, a good, solid, relatively short experience, you know? It just depends. It's kind of like... As long as it's a quality experience. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like the thing, too. Like, I would have felt good if Dark Souls had called it at Anorlando, because uh, that's like, what, eight, ten, ten hours, maybe? Yeah, and that was a quality journey up to that point. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I, I would have been For fine with that. It, I mean, I was, you know, I, I know people have the problems with the second half, blah, blah, blah. We've discussed that. I'm just saying that, like, it's very cool that it went on and stuff, but I still would have, I would have been happy with that, you know? Um, or, uh, you know, it's just the problem with mobile games being so short is, like... I don't know. It's 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 it gets tricky, I guess. The pay tiers change. Yeah, that that is the whole issue, isn't it? It's like how you how you buy a game and when you've actually bought one are kind of now under contention, if that makes right. sense. You know, like Yeah, and it's yeah, there's like DLC is kind of just par for the course now. It's funny cuz microtransaction stuff, I actually really don't mind on mobile cuz I feel like the market is just so fucked there. Where it's oh, really? like, well, you know, if, if five dollars is considered expensive, you know, then it's like, look, developers got to eat. Like they do make like three D models and things like that, you know. Don't buy your latte one day. <laughs> like I know you won't get like a triple A game experience on a on an iPhone or an Android or something or a Windows phone or something like that, unless it's Monument Valley. That's well, yeah. <laughs> but, I like, said to the camera, winking. Right. No, but like Monument Valley is a good example because it's like if you if you haven't played it at all, right? No, just it's, through the eyes of President Frank Underwood. It really is something you kind of have to see. 
it's very hard to describe. Um, it's like these very trippy kind of puzzles. It involves like sort of almost like a Lego set ish kind of world where it's like building as you're as you're playing and solving the puzzle. So like maybe one level is shaped like a big box, you know, and you can lift up the box, like tilt it open one way and walk through it. And then you tilt it open another way and it's completely different, okay. even though it's like should be the same inside. But it kind of plays with like Escherisms and stuff like that, if, if, if what I'm saying makes sense. I think I follow. Yeah. yeah. And you can tell like it's 3D and you can tell something like that. There is a lot of thought and work put into the design. And uh, probably a lot of 3D modeling and stuff that you would pay a lot of money for, you know, programming and all that. So and it's, it's a $2 game? Four, $5, last time I checked. Okay. So Might it's be, top tier. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the thing, I'm just saying that, like, this is considered expensive in the mobile world, where it's considered, it'd be considered kind of, you know, like, if Monument Valley were on Steam, um, moving aside the length, just for quality of content and what you're getting, you'd probably expect to pay more, like... 10 20 range but that would be like obscene on mobile you know what i'm getting right, at so right, right. so i don't mind like microtransactions and things on mobile because the problem is that i say like monument valley seems kind of short for five bucks but i don't know that i'd feel that way if it were like steam or psn or something you know where like the market the prices are the price range is totally different does that like make sense I think so, yeah. So, like, I, yeah, so Monument Valley has an expansion pack where it's, like, 199 for eight extra levels. And if that was, like, a, tr- uh, a, tr- a tried and true video game, as we call it, a not mobile game, we'll say, I guess, you know, um, I would feel like, oh, you're nickel and diming me. Why don't you just give me the fucking levels in one big shot? But here, I, I kind of, I'm more apt to forgive it because it's, like, I know they got to make up the money somehow, you know what I mean? Also, the environment you play in is much different. Yeah, exactly. And so I think that leverages your or changes your expectations a bit. Right. And plus it's like it's not like you're missing out. It's like if I I like the 10 levels for 5 bucks, okay, you got eight more for 2 bucks. Yeah, what the hell? You sure. know. It's not obviously not the very ex- the exploitative kind of stuff where it's like uh, you know, 60 bucks for a new skin, like the price of the whole fucking game or like we're or like evolve where it's like built around DLC. You know, it's like, oh, come Pre-order on. Pre-order for a President Frank Underwood skin for your character. Yeah. I guess what I'm saying is, like, stuff like that, like, Evolve, I think, would be more forgivable if it were a mobile game, because that's the kind of marketplace they're working with. But up in AAA, I mean, you can, AAA land, you can charge what you like for a game, and then, like, have full-on expansion packs and shit, so you don't need to, like, give me, like, little droplets of everything here and there. I don't know, sure. I guess, I don't know if the a la carte system works or seems like cheap there cheap meaning like money grabby you know what i mean sure well when you say triple a there's certain things that consumers expect to go along with that like what well you got your mandatory multiplayer even if it does feel tacked on it's still like expected to be there i think right yeah well that's like you know i guess that like helps out because then microsoft can like get you know what do they call it again when you buy like an an xbox live gold or whatever you know PlayStation Plus and things like that. So then you say, okay, we'll scratch your back and feature you because you might help us keep have people keep subscriptions, you know, new games and online and all that. So, you know what I mean? Mm. So, I, you know, I guess it's 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 kind of like there's a lot of you scratch my back, I scratch yours kind of things going on there, I think, you know? Because, like, you, I mean, multiplayer outside of a feature you can sell in the package, like, you don't necessarily make money off it unless you're, like... Unless it's like an MMO where you charge your subscription rate, you know, because you're running servers and shit like that, I guess. Or if there are people who buy it specifically for the multiplayer because their friends are playing multiplayer. Oh, that's true, yeah. And you're they don't right. give a shit about the single player. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Like a Left 4 Dead kind of game. It's your Starcrafts. Or Evolve, even, right? I think. Isn't that like the whole thing with Evolve? Like you really... I don't know anything about Evolve. It's, um... It's a... I'm from the South, after all. It's a first-person shooter. This is true. It's a first-person shooter where um, you have a team of four players hunting, like, one monster who's a fifth player, you know? And, like, the monster can, well, evolve and things like that, you know? So... Mm -hmm. The um, titular evolution, yeah. Yeah, but it's... Apparently, a lot of it has, like... There's, like, just tons of DLC. It's built around DLC, Apparently, and it's like there's all like pre order bonuses that you can only get by pre ordering it, and like certain weapons. And mod- I don't know, I'm not really a big first person. Sold. <laughs> I'm not really a big first person shooter guy, so to be honest, like 
I don't know. Like I saw it at uh, PAX East last year, like a demo of it. And I was just like, yeah, it looks, looks, looks good, I guess. Beautiful shoot 'em up, shoot uh, first person shooter, whatever. Kinda shrug and go on to the next thing. Yeah, kinda. What are you looking forward to coming to this year's PAX? Oh, this year's PAX. I don't know. Yes, I, getting of a, PAX. getting away really. <laughs> um, you know, uh, I don't know. Um, I don't want to make it sound like it's all doom and gloom, like, oh, God, I hate being a parent. It's the worst thing, but it is. Sometimes you need a break. No, you do. That's the thing. Well, um, I think my, my, my older brother told me, like, about it, and he was, like, put it the best way. It's like, when it's good, it's really good, and when it's bad, it's so bad. You know, um, no, but it, it is, like, a thing where, like, I, you don't really sleep anymore at all, you know? Can you not get a routine going? Not with a, not that young. Like, you kind of can, but, you know, like I said, she's teething early, which just throws everything off then. You can't print out an Excel spreadsheet with her schedule and <laughs> have her adhere to that 100%. That's not possible. I, uh, I, I can try. I begin, I'm getting there, you know. Yeah. But, like, I think she'll sleep, like, five to seven hours is, like, that's, like, the best you're going to get. You'll get that, like, once, once a week or once every two weeks. But, like, five <laughs> hours is more the average. Takes after dad. Not the average. The, I guess the... Media. I don't know. <laughs> I've been doing. I've been doing a lot of statistics stuff. Um, yeah. No. So it's just like that. Um, anywho. Blah blah blah. But the point. So is... you're never going to the actual convention. You're sleeping in the hotel room for seventy two hours. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. yeah. If I if I get there. Um. Sure. I don't know. Proton John's panel Saturday. Uh. Might be a couple other things I might go to. I'm gonna try to see if I can sneak up and meet Wooly. Sneak up on Wooly and kidnap him. Oh, the best friendos are going. Yeah. Matt and Wooly are. I'm not sure about the others. What others? <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Me, according to my fan fiction. Um, no. I don't think they're... Oh, no, Rooster Teeth is going, so Mike and Ray will be there. Nice. Um, yeah, and, like, we have a bunch of new... Like, G-Op's going. Um, he's, I don't think he's been to PAX East. Uh, Void Burger's going. Oh, um, cool. Ty Tuesday, uh, Madison. Madison. Oh, I don't know if you know him. He's on like he's been on like a few. No, I know him, but oh, he's yeah. European. Yeah, he flew in. He, oh wow. Yeah, serious. I feel bad. Psych can't go this year. He like had to sell his tickets. So, no. Yeah. <sighs> what are you gonna do? Yeah. All right. I don't know. So we're gonna be doing uh, podcasts every day as usual at PAX, and I think there might be a way for you to contribute somehow. I have ideas that you came up with. I have ideas to intervene. That I revealed, like, a minute ago, <laughs> but you're going to edit out. Yes. But, uh, well, yeah. That'd look really stupid if I did not edit that out. <laughs> Just leave... Fuck it. Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? Um, I had, I had an idea for a Kickstarter. For a nanny? I want to make a game company uh, that's, like, LGN or Acclaim, where you try to make, like, really inappropriate retro-style licensed games. So, like, um... I don't know, like, uh, like that Benjamin Button movie of it, the video game, <laughs> but like maybe it's a side-scrolling beat 'em up, <laughs> or even like a shoot 'em up or something. You know, like remember those old games where they'd make like Total Recall and you were like in a pink jumpsuit punching like a guy, like a rabbit, and it's like, what the fuck? This isn't Total Recall. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I, I like think so. Movies. Yeah, I would. I'm not really doing that. I never saw Boyhood the movie, but if it were a video game. <laughs> Mm. That reminds me, though, we are doing a game jam-ish kind of thing. Oh, yeah. How's that going? How does that even work? What What the hell are you doing? Um, Basically, me... Ter- well, all right. So, I had this idea because um, Monty Ohm from Rooster Teeth passed away uh, a few weeks ago. Right. And um, he actually had this kind of neat sort of... Um, I don't... Uh, I don't Last know exactly. Wish yeah. Sort of thing? He was like, yeah. instead of bringing flowers to the funeral, he wanted people to make something creative. Which I thought was, like, you know, kind of neat. So I was like, it'd be kind of neat if we just did, like, some sort of amateur game jam thing. And I really didn't have the time, to be honest. But Pola Hoko really liked the idea. So he kind of helped and, like, or I shouldn't say helped. He really just did it, you know, and kind of, like, pushed it through. And we came up with some ideas. So me, Turbo C, and Drastic Actions are taking it. And, um, again, because, like, Pola Hoko, it's really Team Pola Hoko. I think my name is on for, like, celebrity endorsement and the, like, little program. Executive producer. Yeah. But, um... But yeah, we'll be hopefully making something that's not a complete failure. <laughs> and uh, is it going to be a schmuck? Um, an unusual one. I'm gonna say one thing too. It's very. Cute. Is it a schmuck? 
based on Benjamin Button. <laughs> yes, it is. You got you got me. That was my way of marketing it to make money. It gradually gets really tiny. <laughs> to make money off this nice thing. Um, no, um, that 2008 classic. <laughs> No, no, no. Uh, you know what? The one thing is, though, is it's very cutesy, which was Polahoko's kind of demand. Demand? He, no, he really likes cutesy shit. And since he had pulled this together, you know, because I'm like, okay, I have an idea. It's kind of like a shoot em up, but it's not really. Here's the twist to it. People are like, that's, that's a neat idea. But it doesn't have bunnies. Right. And his idea apparently was very close second. So I was like, all right, as a compromise, how about we do my idea with kind of your art style, you know? But he's, like, very, very... I don't know. He, like, loves, like, shit like bubbles and flowers and and stupid-looking slime guys and, and, and like, witches stupid and Stupid-looking like slime guys? No, you know what I mean? Like, Aww. cartoony kind of... But, like, aw, it's... You know what I mean? They kind oh, of Oh, he's covered in goo. Yeah, I guess so, you know? Okay. So, basically, when it when you come... It, sometimes it looks like... I look at this bass and like, oh, that's so goddamn saccharin. But, you know, <laughs> so you're going to see that and you're like, wow, slow beef. Uh, and you were making fun of Toho, huh? And it's like, <laughs> yeah, I know. But so when this game is finished, can I do a let's play of it and shit all over it? Oh, God, please do. Rusty Pro your game. We'll take well, we'll make lots of money off it. What will happen? I'll make it a scare, a game with pop scares and people oh. will make money off it. And then I'll just reskin the whole thing. <laughs> Adorable pop scares. Mm. But that reminds me. Did you know that tonight? Five Nights at Freddy three was released. Wait, sorry, three? Three. When was there a two? There was a two. When? Um, I think a couple months ago. So, to give the guy credit, it's not just like he recolored stuff. It's all new assets and things, but, you know, it's... I, I tweeted about this just a few moments ago. I really think this is just kind of a cyclical deal between some high-profile Let's Players and the dev to just make each other money. Does it really make the dev money? Cause, yeah. Well, I would think people would watch that stuff for the, you know, watching people get surprised at stuff, quote unquote, value. But does that really make them want to pick up the game themselves? Of course, because then they can let's play it and make money, hopefully. Oh, well. But they won't. <laughs> monkey see, monkey do. It's like, a, you know, it's like the whole like, well, I can do I can do what he's doing. And then it's like, oh, no, wait, I didn't have the. And, well, to be fair, they're right. <laughs> Except they don't have the sub base, right? Sure. Right. So. And, yeah, to be fair, they're right. But it, it totally is, because then, like, you know, a bunch of people are like, oh, look at this guy, he, Market Flyer came out with the Five Nights at Freddy 3 video early, and that's just going to publicize the game and sell more and make them both more money. And, hey, you know what? It's not even, like, shady or anything, really. It's just, like, that's just, that's just the deal, you know? Hey, wow, you know, wish I'd thought of it. Not really, but... <laughs> But you'd be rich and be able to retire now. Oh, yeah. Actually, I do wish I'd thought of it. So. Not even, I don't even want to be notch rich, okay? <laughs> just, just maybe one one thousandth of a notch. So what is the premise of Five Nights at Freddy's? I'm picturing a pop scary game, maybe some JPEGs, GIFs. What, what's the concept? What, what's going on? Um, You're an idiot who takes... Well, his... okay. I'm sorry. It was just a question. You know, like Chuck E. Cheese... Yes. You're a security guard at one of those places. You have the overnight okay. shift. A security guard? Okay. Yes. You have the overnight shift. And the animatronics come to life, and they kind of sneak up and try to kill you. Okay. And it's it's actually a smart idea, right? Where it's like you change cameras all around. Like, it's like Night Trap, where you can watch everything on, like, closed-circuit monitors. And you play through the perspective of those monitors? Yeah. Okay. It's, it's first person, but you're mostly looking at cameras. Okay. So the idea is, like... The different animals that are trying to kill you have rules. Like, most of them, if you're watching them, they won't move or anything, you know? So, like, there's kind of tension building up where you look at something in a back room, you go to check on something else, you come back, and the thing's gone. So, you know, it's, like, moving towards you, you know? Mm, don't blink. Yeah. It's kind of, um... So, like, watching it, like, it's got that sort of ambient kind of thing to it, and it's, like, sort of cutesy animatronics, but done with, like, good lighting and, and good art direction, like... You know, so, like, even though I say that about the scratchy, ch like, the little cyclical money deal, which I do think is happening, you know, it's not, like, it's not cheap, you know, the guy is... So the game is actually okay? Well, the problem is I think it's gimmicky, like, it works, it's kind of like Surgery Simulator, where it's, like... Yeah, it's not another classic horror game. <laughs> right, no, 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 but it's, like, it's short enough where it's, like, oh, that's a neat little gimmick, you know? Okay, so, but, the idea but it is, doesn't like, last beyond kind of the first... I really don't see how it could. Yeah. So, like... Like I said, you watch this all through monitors, right? 
and it's basically like kind of like a laptop screen you're looking at. Like your character apparently is just putting this right in his fucking face and can't see anything else when he's looking at the monitor. And you'll occasionally want to look up for your monitor and see if the things are around the room and you have like little defensive measures like lights you can turn on or a flashlight you can shine, I think. Or but, you could quit. Right. Uh, or, yeah, they, these electric doors that close, but all that consumes battery. So if you run out of power, then you have no defenses anymore. So it's just a little bit of, like, management involved. Okay. Am I describing this well? No, it's interesting. It makes me want to see it. Yeah. And the game over for it basically is, like, you get a pop scare. Like, the, like the thing jumps in front of your face and, like, kind of shakes ah. at you or whatever. So when you get a game over, it's very abrupt. Yeah. And so, it, and it's hard to, like, say it's a cheap pop scare, because it is kind of the draw, I guess, more or less. Right. It's not like Arise, where it's like, I've got nothing here, so I might as well scare you with <laughs> right. it, you know? This is more like, like, you, they they kind of just come out with, like, we're going to try and scare you. You know what I mean? Like, it's not... It's cheap horror. It's cheap horror, yeah, but it's not, like, pretend... It's not like Arise, where it's pretending to be something else. If that makes sense. What was Arise pretending to be? <laughs> well, it was. Pre- I think Arise was pretending to be like serious horror. Well, you were supposed <laughs> to be disturbed by Arise. I think in the developer's mind. You've never seen John McCain like this. <laughs> yeah. All right. Maybe. Maybe and they were right. Maybe save that one. But uh, <laughs> no. But I mean, Arise is clearly not a comedy, right? Uh, no, no. Um, Five Nights at Threddy's, I think, is kind of like meant to be like PG thirteen horror. And again, for what it is, it's not bad, right? Okay. It, it's just like the sequel. When I saw it, I'm like, this is kind of the same fucking thing. Like, there's a different map. There's different like monsters. You know, it's not. It's not like he just recycled it. But it's such a short game and experience that it's not. It's not hard to see that he made it in like a couple months with like Unity or something. You know. So, all right. So how much time passed between two and three coming out? Let me see here, because uh, three is today, March first. Five nights at Freddy's. Like, did two not get quite enough Let's Plays, and so he wanted to increase his Let's Play quotient? November 10th. So, four month turnaround. Four months? Yeah. Which, again, if you see it, it's like, you know, I mean, you can tell you, you know, but... You shouldn't have this guy join your game jam. <laughs> I think he knows what he's doing. I think, uh, I mean, it's, uh, you know... Again, it's hard to fault him, but I, I think at this point he's like, well, people love the videos of this, and I can totally make little deals, with, you know, that it's like, hey, you want the exclusive footage, you know, kind of the thing. The formula works. Yeah. I'm, and I'm not implying something super shady where money's changing hands like that, mind you. I just mean, like, it's, you know, we're indirectly writing each other's checks here, and it's, you know. So he's not meeting in a smoke-filled room with the top-tier Let's Players on YouTube? Yeah, no. And like I said, I, I really don't even think that, like, uh... It's, like, shady or something they shouldn't be doing, per se, you know? Trading subscribers under the table. Right. You know, I guess the worst you could say about it is maybe it encourages, like, um, PewDiePie bait games, you know? If you've ever Happy heard that Happy Wheelsy stuff. Happy Wheels. Goat Simulator is, like, very clearly, you know... I think, like, Goat Simulator is very clearly a game meant to to get, like, to be wacky so it'll get on YouTube. It's and meant from, to be shared. On YouTube. An experience meant to be shared, yeah. Yeah, on YouTube, though. So it's Digitally specific, shared. It's specifically meant for people to put their face over and talk about how crazy it is and yell. Right. And with that, I'll be right back. <laughs> or, um, I Am Bread, I kind of feel similarly about. What is that? That's, um, it's made by the people who did Surgery Simulator. It's, um, it's a physics sandbox kind of game. Maybe sandbox is not the right term, but, you know, like, games that rely on, like, wacky things happening with the physics engine, like Happy Wheels. Okay. It's 3D. You're a piece of bread, and you're supposed to get somewhere in, like, a kitchen or something, and you control the four corners of the bread. You can, like, stick to things or roll, you know? So it's quap for food. That's actually a great way to put it. It is It is indeed quap for food. And there's, like, models of stuff around. It's one of those things that, like, looks like, you know, that could be, like, a fun time waster. And I also look at it, and I'm like, I feel like this is supposed to, this is kind of intentionally wacky, which always rubs me the wrong way, but, eh, So do you think Let's Play, as a concept, has introduced a new genre of video games? Yeah. A genre that has not existed until now, or until um, recently. Your Surgeon Simulators, your Quops. I mean, oh, Did Quop come before Let's Play? Yes, it did. Okay. No, 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 you know what it is? It's not a genre that we usually think of in terms of a video game genre, like action or MMO. It's more like a marketing segment type of thing. Okay. It's, it's more about this game is made to appeal to um, a certain audience who will put it on YouTube and promote it. And the, the, the advertising money kind of, the advertising kind of like sells itself, I guess you could say. 
That makes sense. Yeah. It's so you yeah, it's businessman it's not... you. <laughs> well, I'm just saying though, like you, you wouldn't call it like a genre. Like I am bread, Five Nights at Freddy, Three. They're all different games, you know, like that. But and it's, it's like hard to know. Like Goat Simulator. I mean, it's hard to know what's like a quote unquote cash in or not anymore. You know, because. People genuinely like to watch that stuff, I guess. You know, they're getting the entertainment out of it. There's nothing, there's not like, nobody's like stealing or tricking anybody, yeah. you know. I think Goat Simulator is one that people actually like to play too, not just watch. Right, yeah, totally. Like, you know, you get the wacky people screaming over it and it just like makes other people want to buy the game themselves and do wacky screaming things over it. So they'll make money and sell it and, you know. I guess it's like a video game pyramid scheme, but nobody's really <laughs> getting screwed in it, so. Right. Maybe the advertisers. I... You can't put anyone in jail over it. Yeah, no, there's nothing wrong with it, I guess. It's not like a Ponzi scheme. It's just like, yeah. It's one of those things that feels wrong because I guess it's a new revenue stream, but I don't know. It's I guess totally you could look at it and be like, that's shameful. I guess, yeah. It's if like, you're all high and mighty and whatnot. Yeah. Well, I, guess, I mean, you could, I guess, make the argument, oh, they're ruining video games, but... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> like Evolve wasn't. I think your game jam will prove who can really ruin video games. <laughs> oh, it's such a that was a Pulaho KO from Diabetes. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, but yeah. So what else is new? What else are we playing? I oh, I'm playing a lot of like. Um, I've actually this has been interesting. I've been getting dev keys. Yeah, I've gotten a couple of them that I haven't followed up on because I'm bad at that. I'm uh no yeah I've been trying to follow up on it actually because I feel bad like they they go out of there you know they're like people hey, know to go to you and not me you're the networker guy I'm just the also there guy. I mean I you know I, I like to go out and talk to people you know ugh it's exhausting <laughs> it's it's fun you meet you meet new people ugh it's great you know um. You make a funny tweet, somebody somebody high up, like, uh, who makes the video games and smokes the big cigars, retweets it, you're a somebody for a day. Hey, I'll have you know, during the Super Bowl, speaking of that, I did a Nuclear throne theme tweet, and the Nuclear Throne guys retweeted it. Yeah, Nuclear Throne guy, I had him on a stream, uh, uh, what do you call it, early on before he got popular and too big for me. Um, um no, uh, yeah, the, the Rami? Yes. Nice job. Yeah, I offended him a little. But, uh, <laughs> really? nice no, you know, it's funny. I, uh, and it's so, it's just totally like, I'm not being serious here, but like, mm. um, we were talking about the game and all that. And he mentioned something like, you know, we were really trying to embrace the streaming and things like that, you know? And I was like, Hey, you get free beta testing out of it. Right. And he kind of got not pissed, but he was like, because just to be clear, we don't, we do not get consider this free beta. We hire beta <laughs> testers. They're really good. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm just kidding. I'm not, you know. <laughs> serious but it is free beta no i'm joking it's not um <laughs> but, but no, no um he did uh he like he played nuclear throne and this is really cool ty tuesday's been playing a lot of nuclear throne and ty wanted to do a race thing so he said it'd be cool if they had seeds like in isaac the the dev made like made a version of the game specifically for that they have a daily challenge now on there yeah, right? yeah 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 basically but like if you yeah if you want to sync up your nuclear throne games you can or whatever but i love nuclear throne i really like it a lot too it's a lot like Binding of Isaac in design, but it doesn't take very long to ramp up. I feel like to get stuff. I feel like Binding of Isaac, Rebirth, and Hotline Miami had a child that outdid their parents. You know, and I liked Hotline Miami, and I like Rebirth a lot. Please don't get me wrong, but I mean, I, Nuclear Throne's really cool. I think. But you know, you've probably you've probably seen people play that now. What other shit have I been playing here? Um, I still have not reached the Nuclear Throne. Trash TV. Um, is a game that uh, Jake Hurst... I liked it a lot. It was a fun little puzzle platformer. You know, a uh, neat aesthetic to it. I have a video of it if you want to see it. Um, okay. And just for the record, too, these are all, like, unpaid. Nobody's paying me. I Because I am not that level, nor will I ever be that level where it's like, we need this... This was like... No, no, no. This was more like... Hey, like, I don't mind throwing a fucking steam key, you know, like, right. like a fucking table scrap to a dog, but, you know, slow beef's <laughs> nobody in the scheme of things now, but, uh, because somebody asked about that when I, I also played this game called Dark Echo, which, uh, is now on Steam Greenlight, but I played it on my phone, which is a cool horror stealth game with no graphics. Text based? No, sound. There's, there's literally graphics, don't get me wrong, like, when you're walking down the hall, they'll show your footsteps and it'll show the sound waves you're kind of making. 
very minimalist. Extremely minimalist. And there's like yeah. monsters, but they never show you what like the monsters are or anything like that. So it's all about like you can like throw stones to like, you know. Like, that sounds neat. I want to see that or hear that. I have a video of that on my channel as well. Um, well so, maybe someone else's video. Somebody else somebody asked me to do a let's play of it and I asked the dev and they said yes. I know what game I want to hype though. Okay. Holy shit, you gotta play this. Freedom Planet. I saw part of a stream you did with a rather chaotic stream you did with uh, the cast. Yeah. I, and I, people behind it. And Edwin Tiong was there, by the way. Yeah, that's Who's, right. For those Retsu Prey fans who what was... What a pool. Uh, Dan McNeely, right, from uh, Trap and all that. Dan McNeely of literally anything you've played on Newgrounds. Exactly. Um, uh, but we had, like, Don Bennett, a voice actress, um, who played, like, one of the main leads. We had uh, uh, a couple other guys, like um, Paul Seymour, um, I'm... Alejandro Saab. I know I'm going to like miss somebody and feel like a dick. Uh, and then the developer, Strife, who's uh, a guy who's probably one of the best game developers I've ever heard. Um, Cause he knew what he wanted to make and he went on Kickstarter. He added playable. He's like, he goes, if you make a Kickstarter though, he goes, have a playable demo. That's how you win this. He's like, I have one level made. Each level makes like, takes me like a month to make. Cause they're like big. The game is kind of like, let me get into the game. The game is kind of like, um, Shovel Knight is to the NES as Freedom Planet is to, like, the Genesis slash Saturn. Or Sega, maybe, you know? Sonic-y stuff. Yeah, there's, like, there's like Sonic-y stuff where you run fast through a 2D level. It does Sonic better than a lot of modern Sonic. Um, oh. There's Sparkster Rocket Knight kind of things going on there. Um, so Freedom Planet does Sonic better than Sonic 2006? I mean, as hard as, as hard as that is to believe. Which Sonic is Freedom Planet emulating? This is important. Uh, probably, like... The original one, two, three. Okay, that's good. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's, like, multiple playable characters, fully voiced cutscenes. Uh, there's, like, a lot of treasure influence stuff. It's, like, really cool. Um, I actually, like, convinced the dev to throw Wooly a free key because I'm like, I know Wooly's going to like this. Nice. So it was, like, a stream and also a DVD commentary kind of thing. More or less. So, but like, when you have so many people who worked on the game, I really took a back seat. So, <laughs> a.k.a. it's probably my best video ever. Um... I haven't. I have to rewatch the footage and like post it. But uh, yeah, I I really like that game. And apparently, if I can beat hard mode without dying, he'll rename it slow beef mode. Oh, and how hard is hard mode? Oh, I couldn't do it. But no. <laughs> but I'll be trying. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, no. 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 So like, um, Freedom Planet's really awesome. They're really cool people behind it and stuff. They're also gonna be Paxies. Who else is there? Oh, um, Shalinor from SA, one of the game's mods. Came out with uh, uh, her game, her team's game. Uh, she She's, uh, I think, heads up Glass Bottom Games, if I remember the name of it, uh, which is Hot Tin Roof, the cat that wore a fedora. Um, not really, it wasn't really my kind of game. It was kind of like a, an adventure game, like 3D platformer. Well, no. It's like a, it's a very unique hybrid, like unique genre. I think I'd like to try it again, maybe, you know? Okay. But, like, you solve puzzles with your revolver, like, you load, like, different kinds of rounds in it. And that's, and then, like, it's, it's 2.5D, I guess, where it is, like, a 3D engine and things like that, but you play on, like, a 2D plane, mostly. And you use a gun to progress? Yeah, like, you have, like, this non-lethal revolver that, like, will have, like, bubble shots or, like, um... So, situational bullets. Yeah, yeah, more or less, yeah. You know, it's very, it's a neat concept. I like, I, maybe I played it like a little too late. I just, I couldn't like, I couldn't get into it per se. Um, I have one I'd like to show you called Y2K. Well, you're about 15 years too late for that. It's a, it's a, it's like an, it's an earth, it's something like a earthbound meets persona. As I understand, I never played persona. This is what people in the stream have told me. I never me. did either, but people go crazy for that. Seriously, yeah. And you're, you're like a hipster in the nineties. And um, you lose your grocery list to a cat. You end up following it. And then it's, like, very silly. And then it gets kind of creepy. It's really cool. But it's called Y2K <laughs> if you want. I, I have to put my video up at that, too. God, I have so much video to put up. Um, all right. And I have another big thing I want to plug. Another big indie game. This is good. Oh I, this is going to be phenomenal. Have you played the under? Have you played the Undertale? No. Okay. Uh, this is a free demo. I don't want to spoil it for anybody. Please, God, if you like Earthbound, play the Undertale. The demo. Ooh. Everyone loves Earthbound. Yeah. And then you're going to find out the demo has multiple endings. Just play it a second time. And oh, holy shit, it's a lot. It's, it's, I, I won't spoil it, but 
dag yo when it comes to the Undertale. I'm not done. So here's the another one. It's called it's called uh, Frozen Cortex. It's a turn-based strategy game about robots playing like cyber rugby, punching each other. Uh, no AI. It's all like multiplayer. Played it with Archim Cola. Very cool stuff. If you want to play around sometime. Jeez, you're not gonna have time for all these. No, oh, I'm really not. Well, a Ritz Prey fan I met at PAX South as a programmer on a game that had its Kickstarter funded. Nice. Uh, it's called Hive Jump. You ever played that? Actually, that sounds familiar. Maybe because you told me about it, but no, I have not played it. Yeah, so it's like a kind of like a cross between well, it's a cooperative shooter game, two D, and it's got a setting a lot like Spelunky. Mm-hmm. You're you know wood, rocks, destructible shit, and it's just like crazy chaos, kill aliens stuff. And it's really fun. Hive Jump. They bill it as uh, one part Spelunky, one part XCOM. Oh, very cool. Well, I like that kind of thing. So if you have buddies and you like to play co-op shit and probably wind up yelling at each other, that's probably your kind of game. You're trying to be a dick to me that I don't have buddies? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Oh, and the level uh, levels are also procedurally generated. Yeah, it looks pretty cool, actually, I'm yeah. looking at the Kickstarter page right now. It was really fun. I enjoyed playing it. Nice. They might be at the PAX East 2, I don't know. I'll have to find these guys. Keep a lookout. A uh, friend of the show, uh, or friend of... Or, uh, no, he's done, I think, like, little, like, art stuff for us, you know, in the past, or whatever. But, uh, Rock, you know Rakugaki Itoko? Raku, Raku, you might know the name. Raku. Well, Raku. Does... Uh, artist, like, draws stuff and things like that. Yeah, but what have they done for us lately? Well, they, they're make, they, he's make he's making a game called, uh, uh, Jack the Reaper, which is really cool. Oh, um, I think I remember this yeah. fellow. Yeah. It's like an SNES kind of platformer, you know? Oh, you know, want to hear something funny with all these games? I have a, Please? I got a, my wife got me a PlayStation 4. And let me guess, you have not played it yet. No. <laughs> I want to get PT tonight. Um, I have a Last of Us Remastered. I got to redeem, too. PT, that's the one that's just like a playable trailer right now, not a full game? Yeah, it's playable teaser. Um, teaser, not even yeah. trailer, right? right. Yeah, yeah. I remember the tweeters were blowing up over that when it was released. Yeah, I've been dying to play it. I've, I've watched playthroughs of it, but it looked really cool, like, in person. <laughs> playthroughs of a teaser. It's really good. Interesting. You know what it is, right? I do, vaguely. A Kojima, Silent hill It's Well, it's, Silent, it's the new Silent Hill game. Oh, it is Silent Hill. Yeah, it's, it's well, actually, it's it's called Silent Hills, with an S at the end. Because um, Hideo Kojima. But um, mm. he got a, I was about to say Benicio de Turmo, that's not right. Um, uh, the guy from Pan's Labyrinth, the director, Guillermo de Turmo? De Turo? I, I know I just butchered that, and I apologize to everyone out there. It's just pausing there to, so people can react in disgust. And then um, that guy from Walking Dead. Um, uh, Daryl, right? Yes. Yeah. Which, like, I was like, I mean, hey, he's a great guy, and I'm, I'm more like Hideo Kojima doing Silent Hill. That's like You list all those names together, first thing you think of is new Silent Hill. You know, it's funny, though, like, when I heard Hideo Kojima's Silent Hill, I'm like, that is really perfect. Makes sense. It totally does, right? It's like, at least, and at least it's not another fucking Metal Gear. But we're getting that later, too. Which, <laughs> I am kind of, I am interested in open world Metal Gear. In fact, I almost get the feeling, maybe I'm wrong here, that MGS3 was kind of meant to be an open-world Metal Gear in a way. That's what they wanted to do, but had to pull it way, way back. That's what I think. Because remember, even the original trailers, too, when like he's going to hijack a motorcycle and the guy's like, this is no Vice City, you're in a jungle. You remember that? <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, so that's, that, that's my little theory, but yeah, they had to pull it way back, so... I just, uh, I don't know how much more you can do to, you can retcon about Big Boss, where now he's, he's got, like, a fake arm now, or, or not, a prosthetic I, arm, yeah, I feel like I was kind of done with the Metal Gear universe after three. Like, four I was let down by, Ground Zeroes, I was, like, okay, it wasn't really for me all that much. That being said, though, some of the trailers and stuff that they show for Phantom Pain is wanting to pull me back in. But just for the gameplay stuff, not, like, the canon and whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am kind of, I feel like I'm just kind of over that whole, like, storyline. Yeah. I really, I have to be honest, too, and I think we've talked about it. I felt very ripped off with 4, where it's like, we're killing Solid Snake. But, you know, you got a guy that looks and talks just like him, you know? I mean, what? It's technically not Snake. It's back 30 or whatever years ago. And it's like, come the fuck on. It is. Just knock it off, you know? I mean, I know it's Kiefer Sutherland now, and that's totally different, but, yeah, come on. 
You get the idea, though. Um, what else is there? Uh, so, yeah, Bloodborne's coming out soon. I want to play that. Oh, all the trailers and stuff look so good, but I just don't have the hardware. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll send you a postcard from hell. <laughs> no, here's what you do. You pick up the game, Kickstarter to fly me over there, co-op Let's Play in person. Fund it. You know, I, I bet that we could fund that. Go fund me. What the hell's the reward tier for that? Um, I'll say your name for five bucks. You don't have the part. T- you don't have 20 the time. bucks. I'll get a tattoo of your name on my butt. You can't take the time off. 50 bucks. I will get a tattoo of your name on uh, my dick. This is what you don't understand. Is that this, people, just, this is the pledge goals. This is how they work, right? There's people listening to this podcast who are like, yeah, I'd do it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> and and first of all, no, <laughs> um, but you couldn't take the time because you couldn't take the time off because then we're going to have like somebody's going to put the Kickstarter up in our name and steal all that money or something. I but. will have time off eventually, though. The trick is called GoFundMe because that way you don't have. How the fuck are you going to take some vacation time to fly up to fucking New Jersey to play Bloodborne, <laughs> which comes out in like two weeks or three weeks or something? Oh, yeah, it does come out in March, doesn't it? March 24, I think. Summer break, man. Oh, and... Hashtag um, spring break. Oh, jeez. Come on. Oh, the other game. Um, And Arkham okay. Knight's coming out in June. Uh, I, I don't know how I feel about that one. So, I've heard Arkham Origins kind of a one-off. wasn't the original team and all that, but this is going to be... I have that game, but I never played it. Origins? Origins, yeah. You know, I, I played like an hour of it, and then I never, I never picked it up again. Just didn't grab you. Well, I heard the big problem was just bugs. Oh, I, I think never we, even I think we got talked that about far. this on like an old episode. I think so too. Yeah. yeah, there's like a big bridge. Yeah, yeah. I liked. I loved like Asylum and City. Oh yeah. So um, I don't know, but this one's supposed to be like the original team again. Yeah, the trailers make it look good, but I, I don't know. For some reason, I feel skeptical. Well, it's no, it's no Gotham on Fox. I'm sure, but you know. Mm-hmm. Speaking of fucking skeptical. What can be? Yeah, serious. Just give me some more flash. That reminds me. Um, yeah. Are you watching Better Call Saul? No, I'm a cable cutter. Oh. I don't have the TV. Um, do you have Amazon Prime? Nope. I have Netflix. Well, episode one is on AMC.com. All I watch is House of Cards. I'm not caught up to House of Cards. I only watched the first season of it. It's it's a, such a fun show. It's, it's completely ever. ridiculous, but I love it for it. Um, it's a British show originally, did you know? I did. Yeah, I, I know. I watched uh, just the like Brit- Kevin Spacey was originally British. That's true. Yeah. yeah. No. Um, Better Call Saul, I thought was going to be a really stupid, shitty cash grab off Breaking Bad. Nah, Bob Odenkirk is smart. Yeah, no, he is smart, and so is Vince Gilligan because this show is actually great. <laughs> there's a little. There's like one too many Breaking Bad cameos for my taste. I feel like you kind of have to do that early on before the show finds its own. Rhythm and its own identity. Oh, yeah, yeah, You yeah. kind of have to do the piggyback thing for a little while. But the hope is that it overcomes that hurdle and goes to its own stuff. Right. Like, Mike Ehrmantraut's a character. Right. For not, like, a wonderful reason, you know? So, I, but I guess they had to meet somehow, because he was technically Saul's private eye. I've been kind of rewatching Breaking Bad, you know? Yeah. So, it kind of makes sense, but it's, like, one of those things you see it, and you're, like, your cheese alarm kind of <laughs> starts to go a little, you know? And and then there's one at the end of the first episode where it's like, oh, look who this is. Or you're like, oh, oh yeah. I don't think they'd have met. You is know, that Michael kind of McKeon thing. Is McKeon in the cast? Yes, he is. Is he really good? I like him a lot. Yeah, he is, actually. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know if I should tell you about it. He plays um, he plays uh, Chuck McGill. Because you remember Saul's real name is James McGill. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. So he's his brother who's like a, like a legit lawyer at like a big law firm. Who suffers from, um, I don't know if they name the disease, uh, but it's basically he has a hypersensitivity to electromagnetism, which, like, okay. if you do the research, like, there's, like, a, it's kind of a thing, but, like, doctors think it's really just a psychological kind of deal. Like, it's so rare, you know, that there's not much data on it. Okay. So, like, you know, um, so Saul kind of has to take care of him and, like... I'm still seeing, like, where that relationship goes and stuff. And he's sort of like... It's funny because, you know, Saul's kind of like... Uh, I, I keep calling him like James McGill, I guess, or whatever. He's It's 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 interesting because I'm like... I kind of almost want to see, like, an alternate timeline where he's just 
at this point where he is in the show where he's really a good guy, kind of shady, which he was always, he was kind of a good guy, I guess, on Breaking Bad, too, you know? No, really? No, 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 actually, I mean, he, uh, there's, like, um, a scene where somebody, like, uh, I don't know. I guess we can kind of. I can kind of spoil Breaking Bad a bit. In season three, somebody wants to kill Jesse and threaten Saul to do it, and Saul Saul's like, "Well, it's, you know, lawyer client confidentiality. I can't betray that." And he approaches Saul. He goes, "Okay, well, you know, okay, I can't tell you, but maybe I leave this uh, address on my notebook and it's on my desk, and and I can't control that. So anyway, I'm gonna take a walk by. But it's really a fake address because he's not gonna sell out to like mm. Jesse. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. Like he wasn't. He was a criminal, but he was. He wasn't. He was at least like kind of loyal. He wasn't a monster like Walt. No, no. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The right thing by people, even if it weren't like the legal thing, and he wanted to make money at the same time. You know. So does it lessen your enjoyment of the show knowing that James doesn't is not becoming a monster per se? Like you kind of know is happening to Walt, and you want to see that transformation happen. You just you kind of know where he's going already. You know what his roadmap looks like. Does that change it for you? It does and doesn't. It's a double-edged sword. Um, cause it's got the prequel problem of, um, I actually, the guy who did Frozen Cortex and I were talking about on Twitter, mm. it's got the preview problem where everybody pretty much has fate, right? Right. It's, it's just, it's interesting cause you watch it and then something bad will happen where Saul's in jeopardy. But you know he's fine. Well, no, no, that's the thing. You get into it still. You're like, oh shit, how's he going to get out of this? But like, right, right. like in the back of your mind, logically, you're like, well, I know he does. Mm. But it still, it doesn't really take away from the mo- that thrilling moment, I guess. But that said, yeah, when you think about it in the grander scheme, it's like, you're not really thinking of, I wonder what's going to happen next with a completely like, wow, I don't know where this could go kind of thing. You're thinking like, I wonder when they're going to get to the part where, you know? Yeah, right. Did you ever, like, I'll give you another one. Did you ever hear of the manipulation of Jesse Pinkman, like, thing in Breaking Bad? Uh, no. Okay, so, again, this is a very major Breaking Bad spoiler, so I'm going to try to dance around it for those of you who haven't watched the show, and you really should because it is as good as you've heard, blah, blah, blah. There is kind of a big notion in seasons four and five or th- yeah, of pe- someone trying to get Jesse to think a certain way, and yes. it turns out he kind of, it kind of tricks him. Yes. Right. There are events that they hide in the show that they don't explicitly tell you about. So, like, one of them, if, if you look up the manipulation of Jesse Pinkman, you'll see, like, there's uh, um, Huel, who's, like, the big security guard who Saul has. Right. Um, he, like, kind of stops Jesse from leaving his, his, the office for, like, a brief second. But if you're really looking, he actually slips his hand in Jesse's pocket and takes something out of it. Which That's is, like, right. a super minor, like, piece of the puzzle. But, like, if you put it all together, it's like, oh, Saul was kind of helping this thing along. Yes. You know? Yes. So what I'm thinking is that Better Call Saul, even though it's built as a spinoff, that's going to be, like, a big reveal in it. It's like, here's this angle of it. Because I was uh, kind of dreading when they, if and when they bring Walt and Jesse back into, into Better Call Saul. I think it's been basically confirmed that that's not happening, at least Walt. Oh, maybe I'm wrong then. We'll never be on the show. I don't know about Jesse. Right, because that almost seems like too... That would be like too cap, too much cameo, right? Yeah. That's where it's just like, hey, did we mention it's a Breaking Bad spinoff, guys? <laughs> then it just becomes but, Breaking Bad again. Right, right, right. Or at least the audience wants it to. I was thinking that would be the very clever thing where, like, they show, like, well, here's my part in this that I never really revealed, but if you're... And then, like, people would go back, like, holy shit, if you actually watch Breaking Bad, they had this kind of... It just seems like too much time in between the first thing airing and the new information to... But keep in mind, this, this, we're in a new age now. This isn't... You don't have to have just seen the show, because you know when you read about it on the internet, somebody in somebody some website's going to be, <laughs> holy shit, can you believe this? You know, it all, like... <sighs> Gilligan plants the seeds, does the spinoff, just to, like, kind of point back to it. That's my grander conspiracy theory. I'll let you have it. Yeah. I'm, no, no, no. I, I like I know what you're saying. It's like, well, what's the point? My point is because it generates, like, huge buzz then, and you're like, holy shit, Vince Gilligan's a genius. That's the guy who made both shows, by the way, for those who don't. Um, but also look for my LGN-like Kickstarter, where I make Better Call Saul the game, which is a <laughs> side-scrolling brawler. The record on the line of kung fu. It's a shmup where you fire various legal documents. See, I think like maybe like pie. You know the movie Pie. If you made Life it, like, of Pie. No, 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 Pie. Just Pie. I never saw Just Pie. Oh, um, Darren Aronofsky movie. Wasn't that the all black and white movie? Yeah. 
I didn't like it when I saw it um, when I was like maybe 18, 19, but I, I kind of want to watch it again now, you know, because I like Aronofsky a lot. Mm-hmm. You may remember him from like um, Black Swan or Soldier Boys. Ah, Black Swan. That's yeah. trying to tie the connection there. Yeah. Yeah. I like Black Swan a lot. It's good. Me too. Did you ever see The Wrestler? Yes. I enjoyed it. Did you know Wrestler and Black Swan are supposed to be one movie originally? <laughs> I'm not even joking. Uh, it's he was supposed he wanted. You know, to show I was s- wondering why Natalie Portman was the main character in both films. Makes sense. <laughs> he was supposed to show. Um, he wanted to show sort of like the high point and low point of like Western culture, like you know what I mean, like ballet and like professional and wrestling. Wrestling, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, as he was writing it, though, he kind of realized they were separate movies. Yeah, which you know, it would be kind of tough to actually. Like, <laughs> I want to see that hybrid, though. But if you think about it too, like um. Him doing the Ram Jam, like the jump off the top rope, and it's like the thing the, that ends the movie. Yeah, and the thing that ends Black Swan, the opera, is where she jumps off the thing to yeah. her death. It's like, oh, we should actually, yeah, that kind of does work. Um, the other difference, though, is in the wrestler, you know what the fuck is going on. <laughs> it's that too. <laughs> That's a small point, <laughs> right? Um, Requiem for a Dream. I don't know if you did you see that one. No, I I can't watch that movie. I just, I know, like, I just know it's completely fucked up. It'll probably fuck me up in the head, and I'll just be miserable watching it. Like, it just sounds like a miserable watch. It is. It is the best movie you will never want to see again. Yeah, and just knowing that makes me not want to watch it at all. Well, it's like, my, I think my top three of, like, the most, like, oh, God, kind of movies are, that's number one. Precious is probably number two, if you ever saw that. No, I never saw that either. Yeah, that's... It's it's a, it's again the same thing. It's good. It's just like you don't feel great after you yeah, watch yeah. it. Um, well, you know what someone pointed out to me too is like Precious tries to end on a high note, where it's like, um, you know, it's like, oh hey, I'm I have found out I'm good at math and I'm learning, and it's like you have like two kids and you're you're you know you don't you're poor as shit. Like your life's kind of fucked still, actually. If you, know? you want me to watch the movie, have it be Precious based on a novel written by somebody who got a lot of sapphires. <laughs> and got rich and happy because of it. Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And the wrestler is probably the third one. But the wrestler, the wrestler, like uh, you've seen. I that. didn't feel like shit after watching the wrestler. I didn't either. But like, there are certain parts in the wrestler where you feel like you're punched. Yeah. Like when he wakes up and he realizes he forgot about the daughter. You're like, yeah. oh god, yeah, there's some no. rough parts in it. Yeah. Why? It's like, why are you, you fucking fool. with this character so much? You know. And then, and then, like, but it's kind of like the wrestler is kind of like practice, you know, because then it's like, okay, now we're going to do that to Precious. And you're like, oh, no, God, this is really bad. Oh, that's so much worse. Stop. And then, like, Requiem for a Dream, it's like, well, life is fucked. <laughs> but, um, I saw a movie recently that's based on a premise that makes you incredibly sad, but then the movie's just kind of awesome after that. John Wick. I never saw John Wick. It's really, really I don't good. Know, I actually don't know anything about John Wick. It is a Keanu Reeves vehicle. He teams up with the, I believe, the stuntmen who were worked on the Matrix. They directed the film. Oh, nice! And it's got a very loose premise. It's very sad, though. I don't want to spoil it, but something very sad happens that motivates Keanu Reeves to do what he does, and it's just a lot of awesome stunt work and gunplay stuff for ninety minutes. I have something even sadder than all of those movies I mentioned. Okay. Chip and Ironicus have a podcast of their own. <laughs> oh, I thought you were just going to say Chip and Ironicus. <laughs> I mean, and that then is. we end the podcast. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I actually haven't had a chance to listen to it yet because fuck them. No, um, <laughs> no, no, no. They, uh, they have a Patreon now. If you didn't know, it's uh, they I think put it's... out podcasts consistently. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> what is that? No, yeah. If you want, it, if you like, if you like, I'll plug them just for free. There, you're welcome. For free <laughs> this time. <laughs> I'm still waiting, Chip, for those other plugs. <laughs> Where's my tribute, Jesus? <laughs> no, just don't kick a can your way, fuckers. No, um, <laughs> no, I meant just for the hell of it. Really. Who, who the fuck are you again? <laughs> I'm fucking nobody. That's, <laughs> that's that's actually the movie that's even sadder. Requiem than a dream is my 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 it's biography. Called episode one of the Chipot Ironic Cast. <laughs> no, is that how you say that? <laughs> the fuck? The chippicus thing. Well, it's not even called that. 
If you like them, they have a. I'm gonna plug show. their Chipica show. I don't know what it's called. Find out for Woo! yourself. <laughs> oh, gives a shit. No, okay. Um, but uh, yeah, they have a. Yeah, so, what else should we do? We have anything else? This is. We've been trying to. We 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 don't really have an agenda this time. This is just sort of loose bullshitting, I guess. Yeah, I theorized before this that our best stuff is when we just let loose. I agree. Um. <laughs> Welp, I'm out. <laughs> the end. Uh, what do you call it? What do you call it? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Should we start? I'm, I'm like, I'm <laughs> Should we start over? <laughs> Should we <laughs> just forget <laughs> it? Strap it, waste of an hour. Bye. All right, we've rehearsed. Let's get into the real thing. <laughs> this is actually just how you and I bullshit. Like, we, we don't have any sort of friendly banter. It's like, <laughs> look, we got a podcast. <laughs> That's how we get over that awkward social hurdle of ours. Hit the stop button and go our separate ways. <laughs> like, when people meet us at PAX East, <laughs> we have to, like, have them sign disclaimers, like, you will not tell anyone that slow beef and diabetes do not talk to each other. <laughs> we can look in the general direction. <laughs> I, I didn't think talking about precious and requiem for a dream could make me, like, so, <laughs> so giddy. <laughs> Hilarious, a laugh riot, five out of five. <laughs> If you listen to their podcast, though, you'll feel like you just watched Rick Room for a Dream. <laughs> that reminds me, we gotta do um, more Dungeon World shit. I really do. I played that at PAX South. Just a group of random people that I'd never met before sat down and did it. It was so fun. Mm -hmm. The weird thing was on that one, the Dungeon Master didn't really set the world so much. He said it was like me and like seven other people. And he said, so you're all gathered together. And you, Beats, which was my character's name, why are you all gathered here? Why did you gather all these people here? I was like, uh... And then I had to set the premise for the entire adventure. Wow. It's cool. Lots of fun. All right, cool. We'll often do it again. Davo offered to help DM that, a Dungeon World sesh. I think we should do it. I think that should be our next big project. Yes, a big project. Our next big project is sitting and talking into a microphone for another hour. <laughs> No, 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 but those those sessions, you know, they're, like, really, like, three, four hours. That's true, yeah. Yeah. All right, let's make that a goal, you and me, together. Yes, we'll commit. High five! Oh my god, did I just did I just do the fucking Borad voice? Yeah, you did. The hell? Wow, that's My sad. high five! That's even sadder than the Chip and Ironicus podcast! <laughs> well, isn't Borat, like, nine years old now? The movie, at least, <laughs> not the character? Um, <laughs> maybe both. The character based on a novel by Sapphire? He's like Benjamin Button, is his thing. Yeah. <laughs> so you can read all about in my side-scrolling adventure. <laughs> oh, shit. All right. Okay. That's a podcast? I, I, I guess we can call it that legally. Nice. All right. Nice. Take easy, everybody. Dead to rights. Dead to rights. Dead to rights.